Hey, what's up guys, Arava here, and welcome back to another episode of my F1 2021 My Team Career Mode, episode number 63 today for the Austrian Grand Prix in Season 4. If you guys did miss the previous one, the Canadian Grand Prix uploaded just yesterday, yeah, back-to-back -back daily My Team today, then be sure to go check that episode out before you see this one. That was a chaotic, dry-to-wet-to-dry race around Montreal, and, uh, well, a lot of things happened in that one. It was, a, it was a, again, a tough race race for us. I think, you know, start off initially really well, and the tyre choices we made actually long term did not pay off for us, but, you know, you can't, you can say a lot in hindsight, and, you know, initially it was looking like a really bold choice, but in the end, it was a great day for the guys in red. Scuderia Ferrari picked up their first win of the season after I berated them about being such a letdown this season so far. They went and got a, a, gone and won a race. Of course they did, and Leclerc was the one that took them to victory, and it means six Six different winners in the first six races of this season. Absolutely bonkers. But at the moment, Jensen Button on his return to Formula 1 still leads the championship. He's been leading since the beginning, even with all the kind of chaos, the kind of, you know, maybe slump a little bit, you could say, from Jensen and our, and our team in general the last two, three races, maybe apart from Monaco, where we got a podium. Jensen has still remained at the top, controlling the championship in a way that maybe a former world champion champion, uh, you know, has the experience of doing, maybe you could say, but Perez up there with Verstappen, now Leclerc in the top five, with Gasly as well, with that one win he's got up Portugal, so, you know, we've got a lot of contenders, and it's so, so tight right now, you know, we're not, you know, we're now just over a third of the way through the season, but it's really hard to call who is going to be here still standing when we get to places like Jeddah and then the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix to end things off. We're now going to Austria, the Red Bull Ring, bit of a power circuit, and that's a really good timing for a Mercedes power unit upgrade here. So this is one that Mercedes, our, our engine provider, gives us that we don't have to purchase ourselves. It's just a case of waiting for Mercedes to give us that upgrade. Obviously, Honda and Ferrari and Renault doing the same for their respective teams. But uh, yeah, so Mercedes bring an upgrade for us this weekend. So I'm hoping hoping that this could be a catalyst to try and bounce back a little bit because we've lost a bit of pace at some of these power circuits as of late and maybe this is why we we're, were, were waiting and needing this upgrade to come in for us and so hopefully this can be a booster but into Saturday it may not mean too much because it is raining I mean we, we've done well so far in the season not to have too much rain but ever since Baku we, where we had rain in quali and then obviously at Canada we had a wet race now we've got three weekends in a row where rain has affected at least one session, uh, you know, in the race weekend. So I'm hoping this is not the start of what we saw in season three, where so much rain was involved in so much of this season. I'm hoping that maybe it could be drier for the next part of the year, because we did really well for the first, you know, four or five episodes where we were getting just dry sessions and we didn't have that same issue as uh, season three, which obviously, you know, rain's not an issue for me, but obviously becomes unrealistic when there's so much rain in the season. But we just have to deal with the cards we're dealt with in my team career mode there's no way to change those settings so we just go out there and do the best job we can p10 jensen in p8 ghastly looking strong obviously he had a, a really heartbreaking end to the canadian grand prix with an engine failure so uh, he is looking to bounce back here and he's doing it in some style with fastest of, of all way out ahead of his teammate sonoda ferrari looking strong again with a checkerboard of red bull with schumacher and perez right up there verstappen ahead of lando norris but obviously the intermediates, it's not really a great way to indicate what the dry tyre pace will be like, and that's what we're going to get on Sunday, a dry race, so this is going to be a very weird one to call. I can't really see who's genuinely going to be the quickest on Sunday. We're going to know who's the best in intermediate conditions, but that won't mean anything for Sunday, so that's going to make uh, Sunday extra spicy, I guess. In the second part of qualifying, then trying to get through into the top 10 shootout, improving on our consecutive laps, you know, fueling the car up for like two uh, goes in a row, and we're finding some pace there in the last sector. Purple that is up into a 1-2 that is for myself and Jensen although other people rapidly set times and so we move down the order and we need to go again for a, uh, a third uh, lap this is in the session but this is on the same set of tyres because we need to try and save a fresh set for Q3 to make sure we have the best opportunity for that final top 10 shooter if we get through that is because we're down to P7 so the, the standings are so volatile because everyone's just finding more grip you know it's 
rating a little bit less we're seeing as we go on through this Saturday. At the moment, we're behind the two Ferraris, but ahead of Ricardo and Sergio Perez, the man who was looking quite strong uh, in qualifying, obviously, last time out. But let's see what we can do in the last sector. We've gained six tenths in the middle sector, purple first sector, uh, with the, the straight line speed. But the second sector is where we find a lot of time there in the corners and across the line. And it's going to be good enough for fastest in that session. And it's a strong session all round for our team with Button in P3. Verstappen up into P2 doing a great job for Mercedes. So obviously Mercedes brought upgrades for us. They probably obviously also brought upgrades for themselves. So both Verstappen and Hamilton make it through. And the two Red Bulls at the Red Bull ring are knocked out. Their junior, quote-unquote junior team, Alpha Tauri, Gasoline Sonoda, they're through. That is going to be a little bit embarrassing for them. Ricardo knocked out. Norris makes it through. The two Ferraris are through as well. But yeah, clearly the Mercedes Pallion upgrades helping us and helping the Mercedes Works team as we're all four of us through. Even Hamilton through, which obviously we know is surprising because of his form as of late in this career mode. So now we've got an interesting top 10 shootout. Obviously, I'll remember as well in there, Bottas is also through with a Mercedes powered Williams car as well. So great stuff for the Finn who was on the podium last time out. But so now we've got an interesting top 10 shootout and we have a fresh set of intermediates to use. Hopefully that's going to help us try and match this result that we've got in Q2. Here with the first flying lap then and trying to see what we can do. Science up in P4 at the moment. Where are we going to sit? P2. P2 behind Valtteri Bottas. Three tenths behind the Finn in the Williams. Leclerc, Verstappen, Sonoda all behind me there. So at the moment, as we go on our second flyer, Bottas is on provisional pole right now in a Williams. We're second. Gasly third. Button P4. Leclerc P5. We squirrel around trying to find the grip but it's not there. It's not there. We've lost some grip compared to Q2 for some reason, and we're not finding the time in the second sector. We've lost the back end now, and we've ruined our flying lap as we go sailing across the grass and the gravel trap, and we narrowly avoid Leclerc there, making sure we don't hit him, and he's not on a flyer. He's not, I don't think. So we're down to P3, Norris up into P2, but Bottas is still in provisional pole. This is absolutely crazy. Are we about to see a Williams be on pole position for the first time in a long time? And it will will it be the man Bottas who used to drive for Williams back in the day when he began his career in Formula One? Let's see at the moment where P3 still looking to improve. Bottas does improve and goes quicker in pole position. We found some time in sector two, but lost it in the last sector, and we don't improve our lap time. We don't improve, and at the end of the session, it all changes because everyone else has another flyer, and Jensen Button is the one that comes through for pole position using the Mercedes upgrades to good use up into P1. Gasly alongside him in P2. Verstappen a very good P3 showing Mercedes upgrades have worked out but for me and Lewis it has not. I just didn't get the lap together. Made too many mistakes just lost some pace really in general from Q2 to Q3 for some reason. Leclerc up in P4 Bottas in the end moves down to P6 it was looking so amazing for him up until the end but then everyone just had better runs at the end so P8, we've got some work to do, but the car is clearly quick, but we've got a very interesting race tomorrow, because I have no clue what the pace is like. We've got such a mixed up top 10, but this is all in inters, let alone the drives. I don't know what on earth the race pace is going to be like for the drives, what the tyre wear will be saying. Let's go to the grid. We've got a massive stab into the unknown to come up. Welcome to the beautiful Styrian Mountains for another chapter in the story of the Austrian Grand Prix. The Spielberg circuit then is situated 700 metres above sea level, with just 10 corners making up one of the shortest laps of the season. One time around here is a distance of 2.6 miles, with the best overtaking chances into Turn 1 or the tight uphill Turn 3. With me today, of course, is Anthony Davidson. Let's discuss Red Bull. What do you make of their performance so far this season? Well, the atmosphere within that team seems very positive at the moment. Everyone seems like they're in great spirits and having a lot of fun doing what they do. And that's definitely contributed to the performances we've seen. It's time to take a look at our starting grid for today's race. Jensen Button lines up on pole position, edging out Max Verstappen, who'll start from P2. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Leclerc, Sonoda, Valtteri Bottas, and Norris. The owner driver, Sainz, Ricardo, and Sergio Perez. Gasly, they've taken a grid penalty. Mick Schumacher, George Russell, and Giovinazzi. 
Ocon, Stroll, and Guan Yu Zhou, and Nicholas Latifi. Eilert, Hamilton, they'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty. Matsushita and Christian Lungard. And now it's time to head down to the track. Right, I know it may look doom and gloom right now, overcast around the Red Bull ring, but it is going to be a dry race for this whole thing, thankfully. So there was a bit of indication for rain, I think a 30% chance, but it looks like it's going to stay away according to the indicator you're going to see in a second. But the big news then into Sunday is Pierre Gasly not on the front row anymore as he has a 10-place grid penalty. So he's taken out of action. That's unfortunate. I'm guessing that's due to obviously component changes from last weekend because we saw his car go up in smoke. So that's a bit of a shame for him in terms of the strategy. While well, my team have decided to put me on the two stop, starting on mediums and going to two sets of softs. But I think everyone around me, barring maybe one or two people, is going on the softs and looking to maybe do the one stop potentially onto another set of mediums later in the race. So I think, unlike Canada, I'm going to ignore what my team is saying. and I'm going to switch on to that soft tar. I, I'd rather be on the softs to be punchy as ever and try and close up to Jen who is on pole position and showing the car has the pace to maybe go out there and try and race for this victory and a podium. But simply put, this is going to be one massive stab into the unknown because all of us don't know what the race pace is like on the dry tyres. It was a full washout on Saturday, all dry today. Who will come out on top? Fire lights are out and we're underway for the Austrian Grand Prix. It's a shocker. It's a shocking start for us. We bogged down. We nearly stalled the car. We've been overtaking by three into turn one. Perez knocks us wide. We take to the escape road like they do in real life to try and avoid any incident. We're down to P9. We've got a howler. Ricardo and Sainz side by side ahead. Leclerc going for the lead of the Grand Prix with Jensen Button defending behind yellow flags. Perez has got damage. And I can see a few cars on the minimap piled up there. Mick Schumacher is out of the Grand Prix. And Leclerc's into the lead as the safety car gets called out. Leclerc, I think just about by an inch or so, is into the lead technically. And Button has to concede down to second place under the safety car. Let's look at a replay. You can see oh, well, you can clearly see where I am. They're bogging down so much. Giovinazzi. Oh, okay. That's where Perez got his damage from Giovinazzi hitting his side and dive bombing and cutting the corner. Schumacher, we watch on board now. How does he actually go out this Grand Prix? A crash with Gio, maybe, or Perez is it? As it, it is with Perez. It is with Perez. That is such an unfortunate incident and the Haas is also broken his front wing there. Schumacher taken out by his own teammate. Meanwhile, there you go. Confirmation. Button does have to concede at first place. He just narrowly loses it because the yellow flag's dropped as he got overtaken. That is so unlucky. So it's Leclerc then uh, from Button, Verstappen, Sonoda, Bottas in P5 on mediums. He's the only man on mediums in this top 10. Then Norris, Ricardo, Sainz, and myself in P9. And Perez, well, he had to pit early for that damage he got from Giovinazzi. Ironically, that man is in P10 right now in the Alfa Romeo as we now go on for green. So an early safety car here on lap one. But we're going green again on lap number four. Looking to overtake Carlos Sainz on the outside as we see Lungard set the fast up for the Grand Prix somehow in the Haas as we make a lovely little switchback move to get Sainz into P8. But he's going to come back at us. We're on the left-hand side but going to dart to the right to defend the inside. Sainz on the outside. Big dive bomb from him. And look on the outside. Gio is there. It was three abreast. And there you go. The Alfa Romeo. Some are looking to make a double overtake there. We were three wide with Gio and Carlos Sainz. We now dive back down the inside of the Ferrari, trying to desperately get the position back at least on the Alfa Romeo. Where did that come from? From the Italian. He's now overtaken by Russell, ironically. But uh, for a moment there, Giovinazzi was looking to be a hero, but just didn't have the car for it. As we now look to try and overtake Sainz, he's defending very well on the inside. We're going to try and switch back him, though, into this corner, try and get the power down as early as we can, a lot earlier than he can. And there you go. That little jump and oomph of acceleration. But the Ferrari is looking pretty handy. He's still there on our outside. We're on the inside, though. Can we squeeze him out? Go to the outside of the circuit. Take the racing line. And we're into P8. And Sainz actually straight away is pressurized by George Russell. And Russell makes a lovely darting move on the inside there. And now those two are having a little lovely old scrap there. So Leclerc still leads the way from Button Verstappen, your top three. But we're watching this uh, really nice battle between 
Russell and Sainz now for the remainder of this lap. They're still side by side yo-yoing about jockeying for position. And now Otto Ocon may join the party there as we see... Oh! Big, big shunt for Lewis Hamilton into the back of Pierre Gasly. Gasly comes in for a pit stop. Hamilton with no front wing now in the last corner. He's going to have to do a whole lap without a front wing. And now the two Alpines are fighting. They're squabbling instead of one of them overtaking the Ferrari. And oh, cool! oh my, what the, what is going on in this race? What is going on? Ocon's lost the back end and the two Alpines are out. They've taken each other out. Absolute devastation here at the Austrian Grand Prix. It's the second safety car in six laps. Can we have a bit of calm here, lads? What is going on? The two Alvines. Ocon spectacularly loses the back end and spins it in a straight line and T-bones his teammate. I can't believe those two different incidents happened on the same lap or near enough this, the same sequence, uh, I guess you could say, on lap five to six. This is the replay then. Hamilton. Uh, these Ah, oh, these cars are coming into the pit lane. That's why Gasly was coming into the pits and has, uh, well, broken Hamilton's front wing, not intentionally, but Hamilton then retires the car. Much like Guan Yu Zhou last episode, uh, Mercedes just think there's too much damage on the car then, so Hamilton parks up and retires following that, and Gasly, having already had a grid penalty, comes in for a front wing change himself. So Gasly had already got damage himself, and has to pit again after his grid penalty down in P11, and this is the, the replay now of Ocon, and oh, okay. It's at this point, he's wobbled, and he's got the DRS open, so essentially he's trying to, he's, he's been too aggressive moving left to right, trying to maybe duck and dive around Sainz, and he's lost the back end with DRS open, and that's what's caused the spin, and then he's T-boned his teammate, and he's taken him out, that's so unlucky and fortunate, unfortunate for Russell, and so both Alpines are out of this Grand Prix, and now under this second safety guard, Leclerc has decided to come in for a pit stop, but no one else is coming in, because we are all trying to do this one stop, and so we need to keep going, you know, the first pit stop is around lap 14 so that would uh, maybe kind of uh, you know imply that uh, Ferrari's plan all along was to do a two stop and I said this last episode even though Leclerc won Canada there's still big question marks about Ferrari's tyre wear and their race pace and so Leclerc pits under this safety car the second one we had of the afternoon and so he's definitely doing a two stop from here because he's on mediums he's, he can't go all the way to the end on one set of mediums from here so he's got to be doing a two stop the rest of us in the top uh, well top eight there, uh, at least, I don't know about science, but top uh, top uh, seven, including me, we're all trying to do a one-stop, so none of us come in, and we're now behind Ricardo, Norris, and Bottas ahead of us in uh, the Williams and P4, Sonoda flying high in P3, lovely to see for him, the Japanese driver in Verstappen P2, Button leads us away, so Button leads the Grand Prix once more, having lost the lead to Leclerc early on. Meanwhile, we're having a look at the Aussie in the McLaren there, trying to turn one, but no way a around the outside instead having to wait for maybe a dive bomb into the right hand and now as we go up the subtle hill ERS deployed can we make a move here oh we're gonna go for it it's a late lunge easy does it roll the car through up into P6 and now we can go chasing after uh, well our, our arch rival from last season Lando Norris the reigning world champion uh, Button still leads the way three tenths of Verstappen Sonoda close behind the top three covered by one second there and Verstappen could he make a move. No DRS activated quite yet, but Verstappen is giving a button a lot of pressure here. Meanwhile, Yuki is feeling some pressure from Valtteri Bottas and Norris here. So this is going to turn into a three-way fight, four-way fight, even if we can get involved. And meanwhile, speaking about a three-way fight, you've got Luka, lovely move from the Haas. We haven't seen too much of Haas this season, but go on. Lungard, the uh, Stroll, and the uh, Nixon Latifi there. We don't, haven't seen too much of all three of these teams. Good to see them fighting Hammer and Tong for the wooden spoon, but, you know, fighting nonetheless and Gasly, who had to make that extra pit stop for damage, is trying to cut his way through on the inside. Gasly, a lovely move on the Haas of Lungard. Now looking to overtake Latifi. He's going to try and cut through. I mean, looking at Sonoda in P3, he's got the pace to just cut through these guys like a hot knife through butter. Gasly on the outside. Oh! More contact and more devastation here. It's not a DNF, but it is a massive spin for the Alfa Romeo. And it's another... Safety car. Oh my god. This race has been so chaotic. And we're only on lap 11. We're only on lap 11. And we've had three safety cars. This 
the circuit is throwing up an absolutely outstanding show right now. Three safety cars in 11 laps. Bonkers. But now is the time to come in. Everyone's going to come in, apart from Bottas, because Bottas is on the medium. So he's going longer into this race to make his one-stop work. For us, though, we're all coming in a lot earlier than we would have liked. But this is now inside a pit stop window, where it makes sense now to pit under this safety guard to get a free pit stop. Unfortunately, though, like Canada, we'll have to double stack. This time, obviously, Jensen was the one who was behind me last episode. So it's kind of only just fair play and kind of, uh, you know, balances out that I'm the one behind him now. So it is what it is. Is, and we, in doing so, we lose the position to Sainz then, and we're behind the Ferrari. We remain ahead of Perez, though, and Callum Eilat in the Aston Martin. Looking pretty okay there behind the Red Bull car. So I believe at the moment, as we go and resume racing, Leclerc is maybe in the lead. No, Bottas is in the lead in the Williams, because he's yet to pit at all in this race. Leclerc is in second, having made one pit stop. But remember, Leclerc is on a two-stop, we think, compared with Sainz, who... Well, Sainz is on a set of soft tyres, so it looks like Ferrari are double committing both their drivers to two stops, even though Sainz is way down the order. And we see Jensen Button overtaking, uh, well, a slower car, but Sonoda with the big dive bomb. Sonoda overtakes Button, who's overtaking Mashu Sita. What a great overtake by Sonoda as we overtake uh, the Ferrari of Sainz around the outside. But Sonoda and Button are battling Button back down the inside. This is great wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing between the Japanese driver and Jensen Button. And Verstappen might get in the mix there, but what a race. Yeah, what a restart by Sonoda. Brilliant stuff there. Aggression uh, to the to the max there as we now go down the inside of Mashu Sita and he's going to squeeze us into the curb. Come on, man. Give us some room, please. We're up into P10. We're kind of aggressively weaving about trying to make sure we block off uh, the, the Haas who's now coming into the pit lane. And we've got, uh, well, right behind us, Sainz and Perez uh, close behind. We've got a pit stop for Bottas. Bottas now into the pit. So in the end, really, if you think about it, Bottas should have pit under the safety cars. Now we see Sonoda on the outside of Verstappen. They're battling and they've actually lost time to each other. And so that, that, that's invited Norris and me into this. And now it's three wide between Norris, Sonoda and Verstappen. Bit of contact made. How many three wides have you seen between AI? This has been absolutely, I'm going to say it, biblical racing. This has been wonderful. And now we're trying to have a go at Verstappen on the outside. Sonoda and Norris still battling Verstappen with a big dive on the inside. I tried to be a bit too clever and break early to cut in tighter. It didn't work at all, so I got my pants pulled down there with that move, so we're going to have to go again hopefully later on, but Button's made his way past Stroll. Stroll, obviously, one of the cars along with Mashusita and those guys that were yet to pit in this Grand Prix, so that's why there's been so much action on this restart because we've got so many cars who are yet to pit who are so much slower, and uh, as we got Sonoda now overtaking Stroll, so we're just getting more and more overtakes because of these slower cars, but Leclerc leads the way, having made an earlier pit stop, remember. Guan Yu Joe in second place in the Williams. He's looking pretty good right now. So Norris is down the inside of Lance Stroll. DRS is now activated. Can we try and catch up to these two? Yes, we can. It's going to be three wide now between ourselves. Norris and Stroll. We're on the outside there. And it's a very bumpy time as we go up the hill. Norris hits us on the left-hand side. We lose the back end just like Ocon. And we've smashed into Stroll. We're not. We're off. Somehow we've held it. And we narrowly, narrowly missed the wall on the left-hand side there. But our race has gone to the absolute absolute bin as we've got floor damage front wing off and for the fourth time now Bert Myland has to drive out around the Red Bull ring a fourth safety car in 16 laps that's an average of a safety car every four laps that's mad but this is the replay and we just well one Norris he's very lucky I ghosted if I hadn't have ghosted I would have taken him out with me but we take out Stroll I'm sorry to him um you know for, because he was just a passenger there but this is what happened in terms of the replay. Lando hits me on the left-hand side there. I've got DRS wide open, so you can see already I've lost the back end massively because we're going at such high speed. The only reason, though, Lando moved right to tap me was because of Stroll being on his inside, so he's kind of cautious about him being there on the left, so I'm not going to blame Lando. It is a racing incident. His AI had nothing to do apart from go a little bit right to make sure he didn't squeeze out Stroll, but in doing so, tapping me on the left-hand side tyre meant that I, I lost the back end in the same exact way Ocon did. Did. You know, when you've got the DRS open and you're wobbling at that high speed, and then for me, I was on the grass as well. Uh, you're just you're just gonna spin, just like Ocon did, basically. Um, but in terms of you know my racing line, I just held my racing line. 
you know, I just thought we're going to go two by two into, into, into that next corner. But little did I know, Stroll was still there on Lando's inside. And so because of that, he had to jink right and hit my left tyre. So it's a, just a very unfortunate racing incident, I feel. Um, but it, it's caused us massive damage. Front wing off, and we've got uh, yellow floor damage. That's uh, not the highest damage we can get. So my engineer has told me it's slight damage. That's how he's categorised it. So that should mean we should be okay to still have some sort of pace in this race. It won't be like Monaco Season 2. Um, it, it'll be kind of more like Canada Season 3, maybe, where we can try and limp around and see what we can do. I don't know. Well, we pit in now. Front wing change. But, of course, we cannot change the damage on the floor. Uh, lap six, uh, 17. We're in P16 now. And Jensen Button is the one that leads us away under the safety car. Sonoda second. Norris third. Sainz fourth. Perez Eilot. Latifi Lungard. So we've got quite a few cars out of place, out of sync of this Grand Prix. Leclerc in P9. Bottas, Guan Yu Zhou, Gasly, Masusita, Ricardo, Verstappen, and then myself in P16. Um, so we've had some pit stops under the the safety car. I think Leclerc, Bottas, Guan Yu Zhou, I think they all came in on the safety car. Button, Sonoda, Norris, Sainz, Perez, they've stayed out uh, on the same tyres they're on. Verstappen's come in onto the hard compound, so Verstappen's definitely going to the end. Whether the others are, I don't know. I don't know whether Button is going to pit again or not, and the same for Sonoda and what, uh, whatnot, but here we are on the restart then. We've, uh, we're at last place now, 16th place. We've still somehow got half of this race left, even though we've had so much action, a whole half of it left as Ricardo now is on the inside of that slower car, the Haas, as we now go to the inside of Verstappen. He's on the hards, remember. So even though we've got floor damage, we're on the quicker tyre. The medium grip is going to kind of outdo the floor damage for now as we go down the inside of the Haas as well, squeeze him out up into P14. You know, we can still have an okay race, but we're going to have to go to the end on these mediums. But I didn't want to go for the hards because they're a horrendous tyre. So we're going to have to try and eke out the tyre wear and just see what we can do with track position defending cars later on with the damaged floor. But right now we're going to watch on another three wide from AI. Gasly, Ricardo, Lungard. Gasly on the inside. Oh my Jesus. Oh my word. We just avoided a massive pile up. That could have been horrendous. That could have been race over for us on Gasly's rear end there as he got skated across the circuit with Lungard and we probably probably by a pixel avoided him on our front wing to his gearbox there and we now continue on in P13. We are living very dangerously here. It's been such a chaotic and absolute carnage of a Grand Prix and there's still more to come as Latifi slow gas leads going to slow up because of him and we're trying to actually overtake the Frenchman in the Alpha Tauri. I don't know whether he has any floor damage or whatever. He's been in the wars as well. Gasly has. He's got DRS. We do as well. On the inside, we've got the pace here. Our engine is helping us. Remember, the upgrade we've got is clearly helping out in a straight line. And, you know, these corners are probably easier than others. You know, if you had to break your floor at a circuit, you know, especially in sector one, these corners where you kind of break in a straight line, turn in nice and slowly, the floor damage isn't that much. In sector two, though, it is hurting us in sector two with the long, higher speed corners. But in sector one, we've actually still got some decent pace you know. And now the fact that Verstappen is fighting gas, he's going to help us out because they're too busy squabbling and we can just sit pretty in P11. Ricardo closing up to Callum Eilat in the Aston Martin, then Guan Yu Zhou, Leclerc, Bottas, Perez, Sainz, Button in third. Sonoda has over... Wait, hang on. Wait, wait, when's it? When's this happened? Sonoda second place, Lando Norris in, in first. We missed it due to the fact there was so much action with us, but uh, Sonoda and Lando got past Jensen Button, but they're now all filing in to the pit lane for their last stop of the Grand Prix. Like I said, they're all still yet to pit for their last stop. Bottas and Leclerc seemingly maybe not. I don't know. Bottas is on soft. So I think Bottas also has to pit again. So Leclerc will inherit the lead anyway. But he's going to go ahead and overtake Bottas on track to get the lead fair and square with a legitimate overtake. Guan Yu Zhou though in third place on the hard compound. He could legit be right up there because he's going to the end. I would think in the same way that Verstappen is as we now go and overtake Ricardo, And Ricardo now has to try and fight Gasly, and there goes Pierre on the left-hand side, medium V, the soft, the soft tyre for Ricardo, maybe wearing out potentially now already, as I think Ricardo pit before the safety car, and uh, Gasly unable to overtake him though, Gasly unable to overtake him, he's uh, remaining in P6, Ricardo remains in P5 then, but uh, Bottas surely will be pitting, I would see, I would say from the soft compound, so Leclerc will get the lead of this race, he hasn't actually overtaken him on track, I thought he would do, with the speed of the Ferrari, but clearly the Williams looking okay for now. But Leclerc will get the lead, you would think. Guan Yu Zhou, though, 
He's in third, and he's on hards, I think. So he's actually got an amazing opportunity here, the Chinese driver, to maybe be in second all the way to in the race, unless some one of us ruins the party. It's not going to be me, but anyone else maybe behind me that's on fresh tyres. But meanwhile, like I said and alluded to, you'd think the Ferrari would overtake the Williams on track, and there you go. Leclerc into the lead properly, on track, in back into the lead and control of this race. Leclerc on mediums. Going to the end, maybe, but he was on those mediums a lot earlier than that last safety car. So whether he can go to the end is another story. But Ricardo comes in now off those soft tyres. So it's going to be, well, Bottas also in, I think. Yeah, no, no, not yet, not yet. Bottas is still going on the soft. So it's a 2-3 for Williams right now. We're in P4. Gasly's chasing after us. And Norris, the man who was leading before the first, last round of pit stops, he's up into P5 and he's going fast as of all. We're just doing our best, you know, our best to basically be annoying to everyone behind us, Gasly included, and when Norris eventually closes up to us, because he will, uh, but we're just going to try and do our best to hold station. Meanwhile then, lap 26, the, the very next lap I think that was, or uh, two laps later, Bottas is in now for his final pit stop, another set of soft. So, interesting, Williams has split their strategies. Guan Yu Zhou's gone long, he's gone conservative on the hard compound, whereas Bottas, they've gone uber aggressive. They, I think they've used like two sets of softs now in this race and to be fair to him uh, you can see maybe why because look at that Bottas sailing around the outside of our teammate Jensen Button the 2009 world champion has been overtaken by his former team Williams in the hands of Bottas there Bottas looking on fire so could Bottas come all the way back through for, for dare I say even a podium maybe if Williams are that quick on the soft compound attire meanwhile Lando Norris on the fresher medium tyres looking to overtake Pierre Gasly on the inside and that's going to help us of course because it moves Gasly away from us and right now we're just somehow sticking in P3 but for how much longer because Norris is coming at us at a rate of knots DRS open he has a little look on the inside we defend very harshly he has a look on the outside we're able to squeeze him out and kind of send him back into the path of Gasly so now the Frenchman will come back at him and those two will fight so that's going to help us out even longer just to delay them overtaking us basically Gasly on the inside and it's a robust bit of defense from Norris the two make a bit of contact puff of smoke maybe as the tyres bang and Norris remains in P4 though DRS open for him because he's still within one second of us meanwhile behind Bottas has already overtaken Verstappen Sonoda Bottas is flying Bottas may be the fastest man on circuit right now we have we've missed the overtake but he overtook Verstappen and Sonoda in one foul swoop meanwhile we are having major issues in, in in sector two the floor damage now is really hurting us we're feeling it the tyre wear now is high enough where the, the, the medium tyre is not negating the floor damage and so Norris waltzes past us you know basically we're a sitting duck we're going to try and do our best the best we can to hold position defend but I don't know where we're going to end up in this race I hope some points at least minimum as we now watch on Perez v Gasly v Bottas on the outside there Perez with a dive bomb on 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 the Alpha Tauri but Bottas yeah, just gets both of them in one corner this is electric stuff there. This might be the drive of the day from Valtteri Bottas there. He was down in P10 only a couple of laps ago. And now he's up into P5. He's overtaking some big names in this race, some big teams. And he's he's, he's flying. He's the flying fin right now in P5. And he's going to catch us in no matter of time. Meanwhile, Lando Norris already bridging a gap to us and trying to chase after Granny Joe on the hards and Leclerc on the mediums, trying to go all the way to the end. It's going to be a very interesting finish. But here comes Bottas. We've got hardly any ERS to deploy. He's on the inside. He's on the quicker compound attire and he's got no damage to his floor and so he just walks past us. That, that was literally like taking candy from a baby for, a, for him and he's up into P4. Now we're down to P5. Will we be overtaken again by Verstappen? We're going to get we're gonna get DRS off Bottas so that will help us to defend against the Mercedes man. It's Mercedes v Mercedes power so it's going to be quite equalised here in a straight line. You can see that Verstappen not really gaining on us too much there so no Nice and easy under braking to make sure we don't lose the back end and we just carry on. We've got five laps to go. Can we keep this going is the question. Or will the tyre wear, will the damage be too much as we now lose the back end on the next lap and Verstappen's through and Ricardo's through. Oh, we, we, we've been doing so well up to this point, but that was a big mistake from us and that was just because of the tyre wear, I think, more so than the damage because we're now at 50% on the rears. 
you know, going a long way on mediums, which is why I think Leclerc, he's surely going to be struggling in first place on those mediums because he, he pit before the safety car, I believe, whereas we pit under the last safety car. So it's going to be a very interesting ending. But for us, well, we're now down to P7 and Jensen Button is closing up to us. We may have to kind of let him by uh, because he's, he has better pace than us. He may be able to, you know, fight Ricard and Verstappen. And we're now constantly losing the back end because as we go on through this race, the floor damage becomes worse because you're going over curves you're damaging it a little bit more and it's, it's rattling around and so I'm losing it mid apex as the car my force feedback on the wheel goes light and so bo uh, button is, is right through up into P7 there's 10 seconds to the next car so I think we should be we should be fine to remain in P8 so that may be the end of our race but it's not the end of this entire race as a whole because Norris look at this on that 33 is behind Guan Yu Zhou in the Williams can he overtake him to be up into P2 he's only then one point four behind Leclerc. Could Norris do this, you know? I have this sense that he may go all the way and get the race win here. The man we made contact with earlier on the Grand Prix and sent us into the wall. The man who got very lucky when we ghosted and didn't take him out. He's using that luck that F1 gods gave him. The fact that I ghosted and he's using it to good use. Up into P2 here. The reigning world champion showing why he is such that. Why he's got that title from last season. He's got some electric pace. McLaren have finally come good maybe this season because here we are on the second last half of the Grand Prix. Oh, Leclerc squeezes him out. Lando just can't quite get it now, but he's got a second bite of the cherry. DRS open. Leclerc with such robust defending. Brilliant work from the man from Monaco. But Lando has got too much pace on those fresher mediums and he's up into first place and surely he's going to book him the win at the Austrian Grand Prix on the second last half of the Grand Prix. I can't believe it. He got so lucky that we didn't go and now Leclerc is being overtaken by the Williams car. Grand Yu Joe, oh, but a contact made. And I think that might be some damage for the Williams, you know. Bit of contact, Leclerc desperately trying to stay on to P2. But I think he made contact with the Williams uh, with a simulation damage. He's looking quite slow now. I mean, look, at he's already lost time. I have a bad feeling that that may be such torrid luck for, 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 for Joe. He might be coming in. Leclerc's in. Leclerc's in. His ties are gone. What did I say? Ferrari may have won the last race, but there's still big question marks over their tyre wear compared to every other team. He's in and he's taken Joe with him. He's taken the Williams man with him. He couldn't He couldn't admit defeat for P2 and instead inflicted some damage on the Williams. And so he's going to have to come in as well. So it means Bottas is up into second place. Another podium for the Flying Finn. He's deserved it, to be fair, with the pace he's had in this last stint. He went from P10 to P2 in, what, five laps, I think it was? Ricardo P3. McLaren have arrived. They've arrived. The, 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 the reigning world champion is in the lead and the team that was, well, one of the quickest teams last season fighting myself and Mick Schumacher, they have arrived finally this season. It's, it's taken them seven races, but they're on for a 1-3 here, split by Bottas. Verstappen, quiet race on hard tyres, very quiet race, but he's up into P4, button P5. Somehow, with floor damage, we've finessed P6. This is quite outstanding, to be honest, but it's all thanks to Leclerc and Graham you Joe's late pit stop. But here comes Lando Norris then to win his first race of the season. It's McLaren's first win of this season. And it's our seventh different winner in seven races. Absolutely bonkers. And meanwhile for us, Leclerc on fresh tyres and a, a pristine car looking to overtake us on the last lap, last corner. Here he comes and we just about hold him. Just about. Leclerc had so much pace there. That's the difference between uh, a broken car and not, and fresh tyres. He caught us up in one lap there. That was ridiculous, but we kept it. P6. What a mad race. What a mad one. Smiling faces on the pit wall after a superb win here in Spielberg, and rightly so, a brilliant effort from the whole team. So, Anthony, what made the difference out there today? A reliable car. That was the most important factor here. This was a real battle of attrition, and you could tell those at the front were trying to find a balance between running their outright pace and taking care of the car to reach the end. As the winners make their way up to the podium, one can only imagine the celebrations that will take place at McLaren tonight. Congratulations to everyone on the team securing the win 
and proving they're a force to be reckoned with out on the track. Well, McLaren have indeed a ride, a double podium and a good load of points for them and the reigning champ on P1, Bottas, though, very good drive. I'm very impressed. I think he deserved the drive of the day, to be honest, versus Callum Eilert for some reason, who it was in P12. Bottas, what a charge for him. And for us as a team, myself and Jensen, well, I mean, Jensen fell away a little bit. I don't know really what happened to him. His race pace just went. He was looking really quick at the start of the race, but it just fell away. But for us, we just finessed a P6 because of other people taking themselves out of that race with Leclerc and Guanyu Joe especially, because otherwise we would have finished in P8, which was uh, going to be probably quite good for us but p6 is amazing for us considering the damage and even with all that chaos button still leads the championship this man is showing why uh, he's returned to Formula 1. He's looking determined. He's controlling this championship somehow. He's still in the lead. Verstappen, he had a very quiet race, but he's quietly got up to second place. I don't know how he's... Merck haven't really looked that quick ever since Imola when Verstappen won, but he's there. He's in second place. Well, awesome stuff for him in the championship. We're down to P3. Perez, Leclerc, Ricardo, Gasly, Bottas, Norris. It's also tight still. You know, there's only a couple of points between, you know, Gasly down to Norris. Only, you know, seven points in, in between myself, Jensen, and Verstappen happen and um, we're only seven races in seven different winners it's all to play for already and in the constructors mclaren they bounce up they bounce back massively they're up into p2 look at the contrasting luck of every team mclaren they, they've been nowhere this season and they're now in p2 in the championship alpha tauri they've been consistently fast in qualifying the race and they're down to p7 because they've just had a torrid race today they had two really bad luck races earlier on in the season um you know because it's so tight if you have a bad race one bad race you're gonna pay the price uh, because Alpha Tauri have looked, you know, like the third best team, uh, or best team at times. Madness, madness. And Williams are fighting Ferrari in the championship. They're ahead in P5 and trying to maybe chase after Mercedes now. Yeah, bonkers. Absolutely bonkers. Guys, if you did enjoy this episode, what an episode. Hit that like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. And you're around here, then do get subscribed for weekly Formula 1 content. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.